through. Okay. Hit it. All right, boys, we are live. Hello. Has anyone thought of an intro yet? Because I still haven't. <laughs> that was your only job, too. <laughs> welcome. Seriously, your only well, responsibility. Welcome to What You're Playing, where uh, two best friends from college and two best friends from YouTube. <laughs> How about that? There you Does go. Does that work? That's nice. Uh, right. talk, yeah, about, like uh, that. talk about video games, news from the week, and what we've been playing. Uh, how you guys doing? Pretty good. I'm tired. Very tired. Yeah. Very hot. Very tired. Hot and tired. Same here. Hot. I uh, my name is Nick. I run this channel here. He's Bag Games on Twitch and YouTube and other places. And uh, Dara. Hello. That is Dara. He has a channel called Ink Eyes that he should be doing stuff with, but hasn't been. Maybe. And then, <laughs> and this other guy is Mike. He's my friend from college, and that's about it. That's true. Yeah, it's all that's true. true. You guys got any housekeeping? Not, not really. This no. this week has been crazy for me. I've been away mostly to working on an IT project, but um, yeah, not much, not much to report no. aside from just busting ass. Mm. The only thing I have to report is that we're doing a giveaway on the channel, ten dollar Amazon gift card. Uh, if you if you hang out for a while, you hang out for like an hour, you can get a ticket. That's 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 all it is basically. Do do we count? Uh, no, you guys hey, don't we? count. We're on the program for no. an hour. <laughs> Mike <laughs> technically fuck? probably has enough points, but uh, oh, do I? I imagine you do. Here, let me let me look real quick. Let me see currency. Mm, what's your name on there? Just Mike T Robot, right? Something like that. Uh, probably. I can't remember. I could look. I guess. Let me see, Mike. Mike T. Robot. You yeah, you got two. Right. You got two hundred points. You could get two tickets if you wanted to. Damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll buy these tickets. <laughs> One guy's got like twenty five right now. So. Jesus. Yeah. So there's that. So odds are a little skewed. <laughs> a little skewed, but I mean that's because he's just there constantly. He's my my ultimate lurker, who's not actually. Well, here though. Yeah. All right, guys. This week, we're going to be talking about uh, Metacritic and how they're changing their user review platform. Uh, a strange, maybe tone-deaf game called Gamer Girl, a horror FMV game about being a female streamer. And how Xbox is uh, its blowing up uh, its, its Xbox Gold accounts, basically, and rolling Project xCloud into its... Oh, I've been, we've been given a bit, of course. Did you guys hear that? I did. I heard it. You did hear it. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is adding Project X Cloud to its streaming subscriptions. Um, who wants what? I actually want the Metacritic story. Uh, I don't know if you guys oh, want to go. I wanted it. You want the Metacritic oh, story? No. Yeah. All right. Mike, I want you to do the Gamer Girl story because <laughs> you brought it to my attention. I, I will read it. I don't know how much I'm going to have to say about it. It does seem weird, but uh, let's talk about Metacritic. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So. We have an article here, gamesindustry.biz by James Batchelor. An interesting way to spell his name. Uh, Metacritic now delays user reviews until more than 24 hours after games launch. Uh, there's an update on it. Company says the decision was not influenced by backlash and review bombing against The Last of Us Part Two, which, which is 100% why this happened. <laughs> right? Yeah. Metacritic has changed the way its user review system works for games, now preventing people from adding their own ratings until more than uh, a day after a title's launch. The change appears to have uh, first been noticed by members of the Reset Era forums yeah, earlier yeah. this month. A post showed that the <laughs> PlayStation 4 version of indie puzzle game uh, Super Liminal was uh, not open to user reviews until uh, 12 p.m. on July 9th, despite the game launching on July 7th. Uh, Forbes confirmed this with a screenshot of the reviews page for last week's Ghost of Tsushima, which showed user reviews were blocked until 12 p.m. on July 18th, approximately 36 hours after its launch on July 17th. Both instances bear the message, please spend time playing the game. <laughs> the change is believed to be a reaction to the ongoing uh, use of user reviews as a form of protests <laughs> from user consumers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Metacritic users have been known to post reviews on the day of release and sometimes even before, often with negative comments and scores to bring the user rating down. So um, Most... what, what, what does this matter? What, what will this actually change? like the the opinion is going to be the same yeah 
I mean, if, yeah. if they want to, if they want to review bomb something, they just go like, you know, they talk to Siri and they're like, remind me in 24 hours to fucking review bomb this thing. Like, I, I can't imagine that this will, I mean, technically, you know, people won't be able to review bomb it like before it launches or the moment it launches. But I, I really don't see like how this is going to help anything whatsoever. Exactly. Uh, if they're going to have a reason to be angry about it. That's going to stay the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I bet this is about pre-orders and trying to get them not canceled before the game comes out and people find out a game's not very good. But I Although, mean, do you think that most people are looking at user review scores or are they looking at critical review scores? Uh, I mean, I would say critical, but I, you know, some yeah. people must think it matter. I feel like critical reviews have uh, lost their uh, sort of credibility a little bit anyway i don't know I, 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 I disagree i i don't know i mean at least not for me like when a game i have been following i know its embargo is up the first thing i do that day is i watch the ign review i watch the game spot review i watch the kind of funny review i like i go watch every single basically review and then i form my opinion from that and uh i i never go like what's joe smo jerk off thinking about this like i i never i'm, I'm never really in that boat so you've never like looked into Steam reviews before getting a game? Well, I mean, or... Steam reviews are different because if we're talking about little indie games, you know, you, yeah, they're, they're, it's like a lot of the time that's the only place you have to pull from is from those user reviews. True, true. What about with movies? Do you look at user reviews or critical reviews? No, because I'm under the impression that the general public is fucking stupid. You know, okay. Like one of my favorite movies of the last. We've talked about this before. One of my favorite movies of the last like ten years is The Witch. User reviews are garbage. Critical reviews are like amazing. I love that movie, and I was I was in the theater at that movie, and people were like bitching at the screen at the movie, and I was like totally captivated. I know you don't like it that much, Mike. I know you don't like it that much, but I it's mean, a weird movie. I don't hate it. I, yeah. you know, I understand why you like it. I yeah. just I hate old English. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll you tell know, you this: that, mo that, mo that movie is much better with subtitles. I will say that. Yes. No, I'd agree on that. Yeah, but I just mean you know the same thing happens with movies a lot. Rotten Tomatoes, which you know used to exist. Yeah, um, just people love to spam like user reviews and leave negative comments about you know whatever agenda they're upset about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess cracking down on it is trying to get the internet to be a little bit you know maybe less shitty. Like first of all, it takes a certain kind of person to leave a review. Like I'm not the type of person who would, and no. I feel like those people will have strong enough opinions that are not going to change anyway i mean look at it it's not like last of us two uh reviews got any better you know well no i well i haven't looked if at anything, they got worse <laughs> what what are they right As now time I, went I on. and i i mean that game is i've been saying it for many weeks now is still amazing uh i'll never yeah. i'll never understand yeah, let me see. How how bad are they now? 5.5. 5. That's a travesty. <laughs> it's an absolute travesty. I can't believe that that's a thing. <clears throat> but these are people just upset about a certain aspect of the game and not the game itself, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say the majority of them probably haven't even played the game. Yeah. You know what they... You so know, you see, it's a it, problem that people do this, no, for this, sure. This is the move. If you want to make this... If you want to legitimately police this shit, you make it so that you have a, um, a, 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 you make a deal with PlayStation and Xbox and you can only leave reviews and Steam. You can only leave reviews on these games if your PSN account or whatever is tied to Metacritic and, uh, you know, if, if your PSN says that you actually own this game, that's what I was going to say. To prove that that you're an actual owner of the game. Yeah, yeah, and and, uh -huh. and even so much, and maybe even like you have a time limit on it. Like the you have to have at least played like four hours of the game or something like that. But here's here's a, the the question though: Wouldn't review bombers still have a valid point regardless because they're still showing that they're upset about something that is still a criticism and sort of like a review of the game ish. I mean, you're going to give a game a zero because you don't like one story aspect when there's all this other stuff involved. Like you're going to give something a zero that is, you know, a, a, a five minute scene and you're going to disregard 
like the the programming, the gameplay, the music, the art direction. But see, like, people will still give a zero anyway. Like yeah. that, I, I don't feel like this uh, time gap is going to make a difference when it comes to that. Oh no, I agree. The time gap isn't. I, I think like the very invasive, ridiculous shit I just said would, because that would really weed out people that actually own the game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. No cost money though. I don't think they're gonna do it. I don't know. Well, I mean, it would just be difficult to link up those networks with Metacritic, right? But it could Expensive. be it could be in Sony's best interest or whoever's best, you know, Xbox's best interest to maybe uh, you know facilitate some of the cost of that to well, help, help them in that way. <clears throat> that could be something that could like mitigate some some cost. Like they they would have to figure it out. Like if we like help. Uh, set up this infrastructure would that cost be less than the damage caused by the the bombs you know what i mean because then all you need to do is just click like what version you own and then sign in with that account yeah um and like a quick verification whether yeah. that gamer tag has that game or not yeah, PlayStation, like it's not Xbox, that they, they it's yeah they, doable. They, they they have all that info you know oh, i mean they, oh i agree it's doable <clears throat> Yeah. I just think I mean who who's really getting hurt by these user reviews? Is it is it the company itself or is it the people that make the game? Uh I think it's the publisher and the developer, and I think it's also mm -hmm. like it's like it's kind of like a, a a roundabout way of saying it mm -hmm. is that like it also hurts people that may have loved the game and now they're like, you know, five point mm -hmm. five, why the why would I fucking play this game? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, th like, the stuff I was saying that we were just talking about with, like, hooking in your accounts to it, I think just that much of it would mitigate the problem so much because people are lazy. Like, if it's real easy to just, uh, you know, drop these bombs, then you'll do it. But if there's, like, some barrier to entry to it, you're like, ah, I don't got time for that shit. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that's, that, that will uh, stop a lot of people from doing that. Yeah. Just out of pure laziness. You're right. Oh, it's absolutely. Like, it's like a padlock on a bike, right? Like mm -hmm. the padlock on the bike, it's really not that hard to break. You could clip it. You know, you could uh, use like a raking tool or something to just like open it. But like most people aren't going to do that, you know? So the question is, why does Metacritic care? I, Metacritic, I imagine. What's, what's they, in it for them? I think they got a lot of bad, a lot of bad press over this. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Just and because I'm sure they're they get some yeah, kind of pressure from the publishers, maybe. Oh yeah, definitely the publishers and I mean Sony. Sony's a huge goddamn corporation. You can't tell me that they didn't be like, yo, Metacritic, what the fuck? This is ridiculous. Like, you know that most of these people didn't even play this game, and it's just making us look bad. And we spent like millions and millions of dollars and years and years and years producing this game. And in one fell swoop, you're, this moron brigade just like created this insane controversy. But then at the same time, they could be like, well, not our fault <laughs> because whatever's happening is because of your decisions and the product you made. We're just a platform for reviews. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, that's mm. not necessarily true. I, I get what you're saying, but like, let's say, uh, there's a di like let's say there's like an indie game or something that's all about like trans characters, right? Yeah. And, and then mm -hmm. like and then like alt right nut jobs or like turf chicks or whatever are just like let's re let's just review bomb this thing, let's blast this thing out of existence. They can just do that without ever even having to know anything about the game or you know or, or even mm -hmm. the story or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. I guess that comes down to like the review itself too, because if you're smart enough and you do your own research yeah and then go to reviews so that it, how, how yeah it's, it's a really tough thing because like how would you know whether a review is is legitimate or not <laughs> you know, it goes into enough detail and yeah. says i hate the fact that they're they're transgender or or this or that or whatever Instead the of, issue this is game, it's like a one line that says this game sucks zero yeah that's yeah. it i think at the end of the day with all things people are stupid <laughs> i know i say this all the time people are dumb and all of these review sites that have popped up yelp or whatever like most people are more inclined to say i hate this thing than this thing was awesome you know like maybe oh, absolutely absolutely maybe a better approach would be forcing certain segments into reviews um 
like fill out all of these paragraphs. How were the graphics? And then next paragraph, how was the audio? How was the gameplay? And then force people to fill those out with like, say like a minimum character limit um, and rating separately. And then it would do like a total rating for you. So you do, you're not skipping those sections and then like another section for like personal notes or something like that. So like each, so re that each reviewer could like have their own score too, like on how legitimate they are exactly so yeah. that once they post it it's not just like this game sucks it's like graphics were okay but story sucked like yeah. i hated that this was in the story uh but at least it touches like they they cover every aspect of like the basic aspects of the video game yeah and um they kind of it kind of forces people to give a more fair rating anyway because you can't just bullshit the graphics section and give it a zero because people are going to be like well that's that's just straight up not true well they they have like the is was this review helpful thing right isn't isn't that something yeah that have... but then the bombers yeah. would all give it a thumbs up because they, they love it that someone's having like a negative reaction over the top yeah 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 people do that or, or just write pure nonsense or some like you know thing has nothing to do with the actual review and yeah. people will upvote it like ironically yeah exactly it's a difficult thing in my opinion it's the police <laughs> All right. Well, uh, again, my opinion is that people are stupid. I, I don't even think that like critical reviews and consumer reviews should co-mingle on the same sites personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. I, I guess I'm going to do this. Oh, you, Mike, which one did you want? The gamer girl one or. I said, I didn't care. Um, if you want to talk about gamer girl, you can. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to talk about this is a this is a Rich Evans moment. All right, no, this is no, from. You, but you know, if you want, <laughs> this is from Gamespot, uh, written by James O'Connor. A new uh, gamer girl, a horror FMV game about a streamer is being ridiculed. A new FMV game will see you working as the chat moderator for a huge streamer and protecting her from someone awful in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh God, I'm I'm. You know what? I think we should play the trailer. Yeah, I want to see it. I, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and F11. I'm gonna cover our. Oh well, I can't really do it that way. Hold on, I'm gonna switch to one of my other views here so we can see this. Actually, hold can on. you still watch it? Does my W2 work here? Let me see. Mm -hmm. All right, here we can do this. You guys actually won't show up here, unfortunately, because I don't have you guys set up for this. Um, you should be able to hear it, right? Okay. Can you boys hear it? No. No. You hear it now? No. Really? No. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Now do you hear I it? I think I watched out it my already. Stream? You hear it? Oh, no, no, I hear it. Okay. Oh, come on. No. Moderate, what do I do? Like, do I answer it? <gasps> <laughs> this is strange, guys. After. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I know. What do you guys think? You got that guy? <laughs> no. Rachel, no, no. <laughs> Abby, you're streaming again. What's it to you? <laughs> Your choices matter. Go alone okay. or check with Susie. This is very... I can't believe FMV games are still a thing. Uh, I didn't think they were anymore. Apparently they are. getting more traction recently. It won't let me full screen it for some reason, which is very annoying. Oh, no! oh my God! <laughs> she... what? Home Invader? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me uh let me get this garbage off screen if it'll let me. Oh, so what do you think? You gotta play? Um I I don't know about that. Um 
FMV games are dumb. <laughs> well, let me just put it out yeah. there straight up. So let me, <laughs> they were dumb 30 years ago. This is like bizarre. Let, let They're me, all from like 20, 30 years ago too. Let, let me read some of these tweets. Uh, this is from Wales Interactive, who is, I guess, the publisher. Gamer Girl is about the impact user comments and actions have on a streamer's mental health and well-being. The reason why FMV Future created the game was to raise the issue of the toxic environment. Like, give me a fucking break. Everybody knows how toxic this shit is. Everybody knows. Toxic environment, which can often appear online behind the anonymity of a username. So, Wales Interactive, the publisher of FMV games like The Complex and Late Shift. Dude, they have... Okay. That's more FMV games than I thought was published in the last 10 years. Excuse oh yeah, me. the complex is new. I've actually seen it. I don't know. It has announced a new FMV title called Gamer Girl, and it's unlike anything we've seen before. The game, which is coming to PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One <laughs> in September, <laughs> lets you play as a popular streamer's chat moderator and personal contact. The game is being developed by FMV Future. It'll be up to you to handle a chat log and maintain personal contact with the streamer Abby Cake ninety nine. <laughs> oh, you'll yeah. make you'll make decisions with the post in her chat. Respond to DMs from her and work to help Abby succeed. She can fire you if you messed up. Interestingly, this is also being positioned as the first improvised FMV game with the press release drawing comparisons to found footage movies like The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity. Part of the game will involve protecting Abby from a predator, <laughs> and this is the part that's messed up. Abby from a predator and following her as she takes her streaming into dangerous real world scenarios. You can watch the trailer below. Um, mm. So, like, I get it. Uh, you know, you get it. Like, you know, gamer girls are like a real thing and they got a lot of creepy motherfuckers after them. But you're raising mm. awareness for people yeah. who are already fully aware. I know. Yes. I know. That and is making true. money off it. Yeah. And making money off of it. It's, it's a, a little <laughs> exploitative of like shit that really happens. Um, yeah. Like uh, I feel like you need to even, in order to even understand what the hell is going on in this game, you you actually need to know what streaming is, is like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do need to know that first and foremost. Otherwise, um, you're gonna be like, "What the hell am I even doing? What is this shit?" <laughs> yeah. It's um, I don't know if it's problematic. Like, do you think it's? Is it just exploitative, uh, or it shouldn't be because one. This is going to sound callous, but your anonymity is your responsibility. Yeah. If you mess that up, that is not a matter of awareness. Like, there are crazies out there that no matter how much awareness you raise, will come and fuck your shit up. Like, yeah. regardless. That's true. And um, you're not going to change their opinion. And by raising awareness, it's not like anybody, anybody else is going to stop them from doing anything. It's just, I mean, impossible. And I don't know. This just sounds. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about it, Mike? Uh, you know, I'd have to play it to see if it's you know honestly offensive or if it's innocent or what. The trailer didn't didn't do it a lot of favors. I thought. No. Um. You know, it's the trailer's already been pulled from YouTube because there was really? a backlash. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't know about that. Yeah, look at the top of the article where it says update. Update. The trailer for Gamer Girl has since been seemingly pulled from YouTube as the video embedded below will no longer play. It did play from... Oh, the embedded video. Okay, yeah, I see that. It attracted significant controversy while initially available. Uh. See, I think when it comes to real life safety, again, I think that's the person's own responsibility to stay anonymous and yeah. as far as hate comments and toxicity in chat that's also up to that that that's never going to change either and that's up to you to just uh -huh. brush off and not let it affect you because I, that's like a known thing haters exist yeah stupid people come around especially if you're a girl you know they come around and and depending on what you look like and what you're doing and what you're wearing yeah, yeah. The, the, the comments are going to change and you're you're almost you know what you're getting yourself into that's the thing if you start streaming it's probably because you've seen another streamer and if you've seen any other streams you know exactly what you're going into so my uh, my girl likes to creep on girl gamer streams and not for the girls but to look at images of their top donors uh -huh. and, oh, and they are always like the greasiest like uh 
broken looking old men that are just like dropping oh, yikes. thousands of dollars and like to think that one of those guys would just like reach beyond the screen and try to do some fucked up shit is like uh, it's, oh, Lord. It's, it's grody <laughs> it's grody as all get out uh, yeah. but what are you gonna do I mean, yeah. I mean, you can make a game about it. Yeah, you can make a game about it. You could, you could make a game about some low-hanging fruit to, uh, I, like, who is the audience for this game? Do girls want to play this game? I feel like no. But I haven't even heard of an FMV game since what Sega? What was that? Sega Saturn? Uh Sega. Like, were those Sega, Sega CD. Sega CD is when the FMV games were a thing. Yes, with um, with Night Trap, right? That was like the big one that got Sega in trouble back in the 90s. Yeah, but that was because of Howard Lincoln. That was because the president of Nintendo was trying to basically ruin Sega. And yeah. he, he was like, they have blood in Mortal Kombat and they have this sexually violent game. If you've ever seen Night Trap, it's like the most ridiculous, silliest thing in the world. It is not even remotely violent. Yeah, it's like a girl yeah. in a bikini and they're throwing like a net on her. Yeah. Um, well, it's but, all the, it's all these like weird like dudes in like all black jumpsuits, including their heads, and they're walking around going, ah, gah, 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 and you have to like c- click <laughs> cer- certain things to like trap them yeah. and stuff like that. It's it's not yeah, it's nothing ridiculous at all. Um, yeah, I feel like this game is uh, it is instead of raising awareness, it's going to show you how horrible this this gamer girl is if she fires you for not doing like an excellent job like geez. that's fun that's funny too that's funny too <laughs> the fact that she could be like you didn't clip the right clip you're fired <laughs> you're fired <laughs> oh shit yeah so that would be the bad ending i don't know i think probably that'd be uh, like game ga- over gamer girl getting murdered is probably the bad ending i would oh imagine my God. oh that'd that's, be the really bad ending yeah that would be my guess all right, but apparently they have like real streamers appearing in a game. They do. Yes, yeah, real life streamers, true. including Cyborg Angel, will also appear within the game as characters. You'll be able to contact some of them too, but they may uh, have ulterior motives. This uh, this Abby Cake is she a real streamer? No, it's something about no, an actress. No, she's, in she's it? not. Yeah, she's not. She's not a real streamer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it has her name, Alexandria Burton. Yo, I don't think. Uh, I, now that I think about it, like, why would any female streamer agree to be that character? Because that's just like immediately putting a target on your back. I feel like I was going to say the fact that she has yeah. disclosed her name. She probably has nasty comments on Twitter and places. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, men continue to be disgusting and the internet is a cesspool. Let's talk about... <laughs> I feel like, you know, I feel like, unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. And nature of people, like, this, sorry to say as a man, but a lot of men are just like that, so... Yeah. Yeah. There's, do- there's a lot of thirsty, scary motherfuckers out there. Let's talk about, expe- <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about Xbox yeah. Game Pass Ultimate, please. Let's get off of this one. Let's Ooh, go. You want me to talk about it? Yeah, please. So this is from, where is this from? Polygon. Polygon. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate adding Project X Cloud Gaming Streaming to a subscription in September, apparently. So um, Microsoft is adding a new perk to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, the subscription that bundles Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass for consoles and PC starting in September which will be Project X Cloud. Uh, it'll cost $14.99 per month. Um, so it's not going to add any additional cost to those already existing services. Which is kind of crazy uh, to me because this is like a whole new platform for them. Yeah, that's really impressive. But, you know, they're they're trying to get you new users, so it's yeah, not yeah. a bad idea. Um, Project X Cloud is Microsoft's cloud-based gaming uh, streaming technology that lets users play Xbox Game Pass titles on phones and tablet devices. And it, it plays them well, from what I understand, right? Um, I mean, I don't know because I don't know anyone that has it because it's been in beta for so long. Uh, I I thought I heard positive um, some positive buzz back a few months ago, but I I'm not sure because I don't have it either, and I don't I don't have a uh, the only person Xbox I know anyway. I, I know like Greg Miller from Kind of Funny is always praising it. Yeah, yeah, no, that might be where I've heard some good things then because I've definitely listened to him talk about it before. Yeah. Um, 
So this is kind of cool. So it says, you know, quote from Phil Spencer here with cloud gaming and uh, Game Pass Ultimate, you'll be able to play over 100 Xbox Game Pass titles on your phone or tablet. Um, and I, I believe those are, you know, some of their bigger games and, oh, yeah. um, the, the, all, all the big hitters they put into this X cloud shit. They're all, they're older. Yeah. 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 The halos, the, um, gears, gears. Yeah. I can't even stuff. think of a third. What it would be Forza. Yeah. Forza. Yeah. Right. Isn't that them? Yeah. That's them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I mean, like this, this, yeah. this, this whole thing, this is their Xbox's thing is about like the ecosystem now, right? Because they sell you Game Pass at like, what is it, 15? It is, I think it's also like 15 bucks a month to this incredibly big uh, games library that you can access like, uh, you know, all on Xbox and then some of it on PC, which is mm -hmm. nuts. It's like one of the best deals imaginable. It, it kicks Yeah, this the, is really good value. It kicks the shit out of PlayStation Plus and PS Now. Like, they're not really evolving those platforms very much. And, mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I like I've been saying it before. I've heard many other people in the industry. We're not in the industry, but I've heard other people in the industry say, like, all this shit, you know, once everyone has very good internet, I mean, it's going to take a long time, there won't be any boxes anymore there won't be any consoles anymore it's all going to be streamed you know mm -hmm. and and like they're mm -hmm. they're laying this crazy foundation for it and the fact that they're giving people a taste f people who already buy like the 50 the people who already have the 15 dollar a month plan are just getting this as a bonus with no extra cost is wild yeah yeah, yeah. like imagine great. imagine if like uh steam had a greatest hit section or something like that, like an amazing greatest hit section that that changed month to month. That was fifteen bucks a month, and you didn't even have to install the stuff on your hard drive, and you just got it. Like every yeah. single, I feel like every single PC gamer would be on that shit. And you could yeah. play it on your phone or tablet. Yeah, phone, tablet, TV. I imagine if there's an application that works for your TV or whatever smart device you have plugged into it, like a Fire Stick or Roku or something, then I'm sure they could build that kind of application for it. Mm. This also stops the need of downloading a game on multiple platforms. Oh, yeah. To be able to oh, play yeah. it here and there. You know, you just get it. If you have it on this, you just you don't have to buy it on, on the PC anymore. Also, it's <laughs> no. also it's like instanced, right? So like if you start playing a Project X Cloud game on your Xbox and then you like pause the instance and then you go somewhere and you, you open it up on uh, a tablet, you're just where you were. Yeah. You know? Yep. Exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, this, these are like the promises of Stadia that they just uh, didn't pull off. You know? Uh, no, let's not talk about Stadia. Like, Stadia is kind of scary for Canary and the Coal Mine shit for this um, cloud gaming future that's supposedly coming. Like, man, they fucked the dog on this one. <laughs> I don't I don't know what they were thinking. They just over-promised so much and have nothing to announce. There's like... I yeah. know I know that they say they have studios that are like working on first party titles, but there hasn't been like a sniff of that. Uh, Did you see the their announcement that there wouldn't be any first party titles for a couple of years? There's something like that came out. Like why release the platform then? Everything that comes out in Sony Stadia. Is. Huh? Cuz Sony's releasing theirs. They have to. I well no, I mean why does state why does Stadia make the announcement? To, why why did why did Stadia come out when it came out? Like I don't understand that. Everything that comes out on Stadia has already been out for like five months or whatever, you know, like mm -hmm. or longer. Yeah, but they they have to get out ahead of these consoles, though. Do they? I, I mean that's the idea, is that this now is the time to steal a user base. You know, when people are about to buy new hardware, they might, you know, go, well, maybe I don't want want to buy such expensive hardware. Maybe I want to go this direction. See, but I feel like a, I feel like a, they need to create a new market instead of taking from these markets. They need to create a market for people who don't want to spend, you know, any money on a on a on a console. Like people like us, like we're very used to having the console like we want the console there it's like yeah. it's been part of our lives our whole lives but then you think about people who like kind of sort of interested in video games but they're like i don't want to buy all that shit and like you know have to have that thing in my house or whatever can't i just like play it on my computer or on my tablet or whatever mm -hmm. I, f I, f I feel like there's mm -hmm. they should have been targeting a market for people that weren't that hardcore about it you know maybe mm -hmm. 
Like you see yeah. this, you see a commercial for uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and you're like, that game looks awesome. And like, yeah, but you gotta pit, spend four hundred bucks first on like a system, and then you can buy the game as opposed to just being like, oh, it's sixty bucks. Yeah, you can just play it on your TV. You don't need anything. You know, <laughs> I feel like that's the market they should have gone after. Yeah, but but how big is that market? Do you think that's huge? I don't think it's huge. It might be huge. I don't know. But it's such a convenient thing. Yeah. Shouldn't it automatically become a huge market? I think for word word of mouth, it could like bleed into really hardcore people and then people might give up their consoles. Right. Um, yeah. But then they're high in PCs too. Well, the idea is that like uh, they they have the high end PCs is supposed to be the idea, you know, like ever all their stuff is running on twenty eighty TIs or whatever the new hotness is, and you don't even have to worry about like is my power supply big enough? Is my graphics card mm -hmm. good enough? Do I have enough memory in this thing? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Which brings up like a really interesting point, like this whole cloud based gaming. Having worked in IT, I can only imagine how much like what what do they have like it how many servers do they have like do they have like almost a, a dedicated pc sort of thing for every person who signs up for the service well i'm sure they've got like giant server farms you know which is blade after blade after blade after blade you know just like in these giant imagine having or like whatever. i don't know let's say two million users yeah. are they going to be like two million servers and computers no no gonna... no no i mean you have a whole bunch of instances on each server you know like one one server is going to be able to handle like you know 500 instances or whatever you know Great. it's yeah it's not going to be like one because you know you can partition those off into different virtual machines yeah but then you're going to be running you into the ground depending on what games are being played true let's say if you have two million users all of them playing like the latest crisis game or something yeah how does that work <laughs> that's a question for people smarter than me <laughs> right it's, yeah. it's a little crazy when you think about it i imagine still, there's still a pc that's playing a game yeah well i'm sure there's like it has a, to be like a good queue. enough and streaming it possibly very far away yeah and streaming far. it so yeah. that's that's extra load on whatever device is running that you probably have to have multiple data centers across the country right man that is yeah. a massive it's got to be an extremely expensive and massive infrastructure yeah so you should do it right the first time you know i mean you should make sure that if you're putting all of this money into this infrastructure that like your your user base is like this shit is great and then they they word of mouth it and then you get more subscribers for more money to make oh, it even better goodness. you know what i mean yeah Oof. but i don't know if that will I don't know if it's. It, I think it will come to fruition if we don't uh, uh, nuke ourselves. <laughs> I don't know. It could take a very long time. This True. could this could be like thirty years in the future for it to be like starting in starting in September though. That's crazy. Yeah. They 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 got to be ready for like a massive rush, right? Well, they've been running their their beta for a long time. So like, I think if anyone's got their ducks in a row, it's gonna be Xbox. Not to mention do that you know, they're, they're Microsoft. I mean, come on. Do you know how large their beta pool was? Uh, I do not. I don't. Okay. I do not. I I don't. You guys haven't been able to see it, but we've been getting comments in chat, mostly just from the Queen Boo. It's like it's like streaming on Netflix or Hulu. Everyone watches a lot of shows, but we're in the age of streaming. People prefer streaming over cable and will pay money for high speed internet to get it instead of a cable package. And mm. that is true, but like this, you're not just when you're watching Netflix, you send a little bit of data over that's like, I need to watch this file, please. And then it all yeah. downloads to you. But then when we're talking about this, you're sending commands up to the server all the time, constantly sending data back and forth, back and forth. And and like, you know, these games, they're not running at 60 frames per second. They're running at 144 frames per second. So that's even more mm -hmm. processing power. And and yeah. people in like bumfuck Alabama or wherever they are or like say up in Saskatchewan or something like that, like they just won't have the option for years and years to have the equivalent of what like say South Korea has or something like that with like 5G and yeah. whatever they're on. I think they're on goddamn 6G now. I don't even know. Uh, whatever is better than anywhere else, but yeah, 6G. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, like I want the streaming future to be real. That'd be super cool because I don't care about physical media. I don't care about the boxes. I, I only care about the experience. So I, I, w I want it to be real, really bad. It's going to be great for games that don't matter if you end up with some some sort of like input lag or like tiny, tiny um, delays like that. Otherwise, anything a little more serious, like it's just not going to work. I can't imagine a fighting game ever working well. Yeah, it's just nothing on a serious level. I yeah. feel like it's just going to be for like mostly casual, fun, casual, yeah. goofy. Yeah. And your, your yeah. action, your action adventure stuff. You know your Tomb Raiders, mm -hmm. your 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 uh, Naughty Dog games, like exactly. Your, your I don't Ma think anything Mario competitive Brothers. is going to happen on this platform. No, probably not. At least not no. for not not with what I can like envision. No, not with the tech I see in the real world today. I can't. And I can't that's see never going to change. Like even I, if you I had... don't I don't know if it's never going to change. We might we might figure something out, but eventually even... one day. Even if you send the data at the speed of light, you're still gonna have like a tiny bit of input lag. I don't know. Fiber is a is a wondrous thing. It's just when your fiber turns into coax that you have to deal with your input lags, right? Which is, I feel like they're gonna have to come out with some sort of alien technology that <laughs> is not existing. All right, boys, forty six minutes. This is the cutoff. What you playing? Ooh, Ooh. guess what? I played um, Neon Chrome. Oh, nice! Did you did excuse, you play it, Nick? Excuse me. Do you mean Neon Abyss? You plebe? Neon Abyss, not Neon yeah. Chrome. That's yeah, another Neon, game. Actually, Neon Abyss. Neon Abyss. Did you did you play it? Yeah, I played about ten runs, maybe. Nice. So what do you think before before I tell you what I think? Um, I like it a lot. There's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot uh -huh. of things that are very annoying that need to be ironed out that piss me off. Um, uh -huh. I, I'll I'll say one run in particular. Okay, first of all, that fucking cat that makes the hearts moldy. Get that bitch out of my rotation. I know, dude. At least make him slower. Dude, what a piece of shit that fucking cat is. What is the benefit of having that cat? I, I, I thought they were supposed to help you. I, all right, so Mike, there's a, uh, we talked about this last week, but there's a, in this, this roguelike contra, like kind of game, um, one of the main mechanics is you find these eggs that hatch and you get familiars that assist you with stuff, but you, you can't <clears> choose. It's totally random. Um, and one of these fucking cats that you get from one of these eggs, he goes and grabs hearts that obviously refill your heart containers, and he can make them moldy. And making them moldy can deal damage to you. Instead of any health re restoration. Yeah. Sometimes I think they give you they give you double health sometimes too because some mold is good mold or whatever. But like uh -huh. if you're if you're down to a half heart and this bitch keeps turning all the hearts moldy, then you're fucked. You, you can't, and he gets to all of it before you do yeah, because he's he's, he's following speed, you all around. Speed of light, this motherfucker. <laughs> and one more thing I'll bitch about with that is I also, I got this great setup where I had uh, like a laser cannon that was shooting like four beams at once. And then I got popcorn, which made it so that like it would explode when I would, when I would hit things with it so I could break all the objects and stuff. And uh -huh. then from one of the eggs, I got a fucking orbital. That dude, when it orbits you, you can shoot it yourself, and then the explosion hits you, and it's like impo dude. it's impossible to not hit it. Oh, you, you, I mean, you literally hit on every point of criticism <laughs> I was gonna bring up. I was gonna bring up the freaking orbital because there's an upgrade you can get. I don't understand how these things are upgrades, but one of the upgrades makes all your rounds and, and bullets and stuff explode. Yeah. And I got that orbital and yeah. I just killed myself because I, my gun was shooting so much. Like, it's supposed to be great when your gun does that. But when yeah. this freaking thing comes around, you just shoot yourself in the face. And I lost a great run. I had like eight heart containers. I, went to, yeah. I was in the last boss. Same. And same. I, just, I just died from yeah. my own up code on code upgrades i was yeah. like what the hell yeah that needs to get fixed like that is that feels so bad especially when it's like something you can't avoid because you know like uh -huh. in the in the binding of isaac you learn over time like oh don't pick this fucking thing up like this thing yeah. will, this thing will ruin your run yeah, but purely by chance yeah when we're talking about the eggs you have no say can you drop the eggs no i tried Man, I, I was trying I was gonna, to find a way to... I looked at it, I couldn't find an option either. I could not find a way to excommunicate those little bitches at all. That sucks. And then, like you said, 
some of the pets i feel like there was another pet that was uh, i was like oh this is kind of stupid but like the one that turns the horse into moldy hearts absolutely got awful yeah another complaint that i had uh was so many of these upgrades you pick up are just so samey yeah they're all like damage up speed up yeah uh your guns upgraded like yeah. most of the stuff i found are those yeah like 70 percent of all the upgrades i've come across are just straight up identical your yeah. damage goes up your melee and range damage goes up i'm like what about like, there's so many different upgrades and all, oh, all these other yes ideas yeah bruna in the chat here also mentioned something to me that was incredibly annoying to me that i don't know has been fixed since i tested like two days ago uh they huh? do, the scroll lock is not locked to your game monitor. So you can just scroll off. If you if you have two monitors, you can just scroll off at any time and fuck yourself. <laughs> really? Yeah. It, it's like I've Ugh. never seen this before in any other game. We're like, oh, I, you know, like, bad. you know, I've got my secondary monitor on the left here. I scroll, you know, there's an enemy on the left. I scroll over there. I just click out of the game. Happens over and over <laughs> and over again. I, I, I got onto Dude. a thread on Steam where other people were complaining and I was like, yeah, this is fucked up. Like, you need to fix this. This is a huge problem. Dude. This is oh, Team 17. They're I not know. even an indie company. What I, the hell? They dropped the ball so hard. That's the, that's the same thing I said to Bruna. I've been like, these guys have been around since like the 90s, maybe even earlier yeah, than dude. that. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Couldn't believe it. I mean, but but besides Another. that, the presentation is spectacular. The music is amazing. The gunplay feels really good. The, the, the enemies are cool. The bosses are awesome. Like, uh -huh. the game is dripping with style and like the actual gameplay feels great, but there's some like... I don't want to play it right now. Like I feel like I want I want an update. I want an update. Like and another major issue on the Switch version is that I don't know if it wasn't like tested enough or what the hell, but like as soon as one of my runs gets overpowered, like it can't handle it and I've had five crashes. Oh, so just ch oh, chug wow. it chugs and dies. It just chugs oh. and dies, just closes wow. and says the game ran into an error. And I just get oh, so frustrated no. and that's like that's like the biggest reason why like it just it just makes me not want to touch it because i'm like what's the point then it's yeah. all about having that this overpowered run where like you're shooting yeah. like 20 lasers in every direction and everything explodes but then you're afraid that if it gets to that point you're gonna lose it <laughs> yeah it's gonna crash that sucks because that is the most fun thing about roguelikes is like turning the screen screen into like a diarrhea of particles you know just like, like risk of rain you yeah. know risk Best of rain example are, uh, what else gets that? In, or, or like at Gungeon, right? When you when you just get like crazy overpowered in Gungeon. Isaac. Yeah. If uh, the game is not going to handle the particle effects and all the, the crazy stuff that's happening, like what is the point? No. I'm yeah, just gonna, not going to play it. Because if your run doesn't get to that point, you're not going to win anyway. It needs to hit that spot. It yeah. needs to, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that feels bad. Feels I, was, bad I was pretty mad about that. I kind of stopped playing it just because of that. But I, I I like the game. I think it's cool, like you said. Um, but samey upgrades, crashes. I don't know. No crashes. I'm sorry on, to hear that. No crashes on PC, but I, I assume that's to be that. that's to be expected. Uh, what about you, Mike? What you playing? Ooh, um, so I finally got Bloodstained. Um, was it called Curse of the Moon Two? Curse of the Moon. Yes. yes. Curse of the Moon Two. Um, either of you guys got it yet? Still no, now? No. It's on my wish list. I was waiting for your review on it, sir. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, I am not. There's, I think, eight, nine levels, and I'm. I just finished level six last night. Yeah. But I, I don't want to spoil anything. I watched some reviews already about it, and there's, um, there's a lot of incentives to beat the game again. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, I I fucking love it, man. It's so good. Really, um, is, is I would it, say it's better than the first one. I haven't looked into it at all. Is it eight bit style like the first thing, first one, or did they go to yeah. sixteen? Are they just okay? Yeah, it, Inti creates. It's it's very similar, you know, graphics. The first one, um, yeah, I think we talked about the different characters. Um, main character from the first one, Zangetsu, returns, but then they've added three new characters. Um, one of them's a corgi in a mech suit, which is awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> Which he has, he can, you know, go invulnerable and he has like limited hover, yeah. but you know, he's all, you know, he's your damage sponge and, um, you know, you have a range character, you have Zangetsu who's more like melee. And then, um, I cannot remember the girl's name right now, but she has the best jump. 
Is she, she like, can also is, do like a. Um, is she like the wizard? No, have you? You remember um, like Shovel Knight or Ducktales, where you like hop on your your weapon, so oh, you, yeah, you shoot yeah, your course. weapon straight down. Yeah, of course. So she's got oh, like yeah. a spear. So she's she's um, very similar to that, where she can you know do it straight down or straight up. Yeah. Um, which most of the she's the only character that can attack down or up like that. Okay. Um, your main character can, but he can only he does like a sequence of attacks. So his first attack straight. And the second attack to go kind of it goes in like an arc. Anyway, game is excellent. Um, I haven't beat it yet. It's actually I would say it's harder than the first one. Yeah, um, I'm playing on veteran difficulty though, so I'm not playing on like the um, I'm playing on. It has knockback like a classic Castlevania. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, nice. So yeah, you, so, you, so I you're falling. You in could a lot not of pits. play with that. You're falling in a lot of pits, is what you're saying. You, I mean, yeah, you you have a decent amount of health, but you get a bad hit, you're done. You fall into a pit, you're done. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, you know, which that's that's how games were way back in the day. Yeah. Um, I still like a good challenge like that. So uh, the bosses have been great, you know, really good. Um, do you remember when I know, beat, like, to learn. do you remember in college where I just, like, burned through a bunch of Castlevanias? I do remember that. We could beat Castlevania 3 with, like, save states. Like Which, just randomly one day. No, no, not sa- no, with save states. Didn't you? Didn't you have a Super Nintendo there? No, but you beat it with save states. You you played on PC. I don't remember that. I thought I beat it yeah. legit. I'm gonna have to play it again and beat it legit on the channel. Yeah, Here. no, that was um. I think Matt, your old roommate there before me, had a bunch of ROMs on his PC uh, or something. What when, when you guys had ROMs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you were playing on a PC. I distinctly remember that you call, did beat the, the all the mega mans though legit oh yeah that's right back yeah. in college yeah. i do remember that yeah dude castlevania is one of my all-time favorite gaming series i was bitching yeah, about this too. one i was bitching about konami a lot on stream today where i was like they've got some of my <sighs> they get some of my favorite um uh ips held hostage right now yeah, yeah. they they're not doing anything no they're just playing they're just fucking with their pachinko machines that's their that's their whole thing <sighs> I'm yeah, serious. Yeah. I'm serious. It's, that's what that's all. It's do. so sad. Uh, you play playing anything else? Um, I um, I did beat uh, Overcooked Two. Had a free update. I I was telling you um, mm-hmm. before you know it was a free update. They do seasonal updates, so this was a um summer update. Yeah, it had like a firework mechanic. It was only it was only I think six levels, five levels. Yeah, but it was free. Okay. Um. So, you know, me and the wife, we, um, we hundred percented it over the, over the weekend. Um, she, you know, didn't throw a controller at me, but <laughs> at she? one point, you know, there's a level where you have to like control, um, you're on a platform and one person has to move it and one person has to get all the ingredients and other things. Yeah. And, you know, you have to do it. I mean, you have to work out your own kind of sequence to do it, but you know, if you want to, um, get a high score and, and, and get three stars, you have to be good, and uh, <laughs> I, yeah, it took a little time there. And uh, I've actually played it, uh, Cook Serve Delicious. My no, what is that? I thought Mike had no. What is it's, that? It's a keyboard control uh, cooking game where, like, you get all these orders come in, and you have to kind of basically memorize what ingredient is on one is on what keyboard button and you have to make these orders like super fast for customers so it's like say you get an order for like spaghetti with meatballs you have to press like s for spaghetti throw it on the plate (laughs) and then uh i don't know t for tomato sauce and then m for meatballs and then you have to like go to your prep station and press m a bunch of times to like throw the meatballs and like (laughs) you know it's like cook them and and you have oh, to like do awesome. all the keyboard combinations like SMB, 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 and then the other order, orders come in. You're just like you're tapping <laughs> so fast on the keyboard. It's it's hilarious. It's really fun. That's gonna be on console nice. too, right? I feel like that. Would it's, have to it be. can't be the same on console. They probably make you like hold certain shoulder buttons or something, and that it'll like switch like what the keys do or whatever. What what the face buttons do. Would be my guess. It's like one of the best part of the game is always awesome. Yeah, it's it's really funny. It's it's worth getting, honestly. I I like it a lot. Okay. As, as far as like goofy cooking games, I, I wish there was like a co-op mode for that. All right, boys. Just, like, I'm looking it up everything. now. Look, graphics look cool. All right, it's um, a lot of fun. I get, yeah, but that's it for me. I got um. So I also played Neon Abyss, and you know how I feel about it. 
Um, and mm-hmm. then the, the other thing I've been playing just this week, I've only done about eight hours of it, is Ghost of Tsushima. And, uh, oh, tell me about that. Oh, How's nice. that? It is the most beautiful open world. Uh, it's mm-hmm. the, the aesthetic is incredible. The combat is very fun, with the exception of the fact that there's no lock-on, which is like kind of mind-boggling to me. They kind of want you to flow from target to target, which sometimes works beautifully and sometimes does not. Um, everything, mm-hmm. everything about the open world I love. Like... There's very minimalistic HUD. They, they use this wind system where you can see where the wind is blowing and that takes you to your what you've marked on the map. You'll find mm-hmm. things in nature like like a fox will bring you to somewhere you need to go or like birds mm-hmm. or whatever. You follow them. They bring you to points of interest. That shit is great. Like going across the land, clearing out the Mongol camps, rescuing people. All that is fun. The storyline quests, like both the sub-story quests and the main story quests, are pretty lame. I think for the most part. Oh, really? Um, so like they 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 have Oof. some like they have some like Assassin's Creed 2 shit in there where it's like you need to follow this target and if this target like goes out of your sight for like 10 seconds, we're just going to restart the mission on you. Yeah. Like like mm. like like that kind of shit. That's annoying. Or like a stealth mission where like if you're found it's it's just over, you know, it doesn't like it, it doesn't um, you know, it just restarts you back there. It doesn't like yeah. it doesn't transition yeah. into like now an all out brawl or whatever. It just won't do it. Um mm. It's very video gamey. Yeah, very very old school stealth game video gamey. And and it's ridiculous to me because like at playing as like a badass samurai walking in there and being like face me bitches i i can fucking murder everybody like i don't need to do <laughs> i don't need to do stealth at all nice. i've got i've got the mechanics pretty well down now already where i could just i could just kill every single mongol on the island of tsushima like i i'm not afraid but you know they put you in these positions where it's like you didn't do the thing exactly right so fuck you and yeah um, and and that's that frustrating. that shit does not feel good to me i'm going to i but I mean, I do love it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Right now, I would say it's like an eight, maybe like a seven and a half, eight out of ten. Um, I, but I'm only eight hours in. Some stuff that is amazing in it is like it's got a very broad upgrade system. You can upgrade your weapons. You can uh, uh, put, ch- you can slot charms into them, like their materia. Um, uh-huh. you, you've got a whole tree for samurai stuff, a whole tree for stealth stuff, a whole tree for blocking, a whole tree for dodging. Um, you got a whole tree for like kunai and then one for bombs that you throw and one for smoke bombs and one for like uh, chimes that you throw that will uh, bring somebody to another area. You know, it'll, it's like it'll like yeah. distract them to another area. Like you can upgrade so much stuff and then there's like flowers you can gather and you can bring those flowers to merchants and the merchants can turn them into dye and you can look however you want and you can play the game as like hardcore assassin or you could lean I'm uh, sorry, hardcore samurai or lean more towards assassin. And as the game continues on, the story is about an honorable samurai realizing sometimes you got to be like a dirty motherfucker to get shit done. So it's about uh-huh. like it's about like a samurai turning into a ninja. So as you do more samurai, as you do more storyline quests, you get more ninja tools and the ninja tools are really fun. Um, but I will find myself in these moments where I'm like, I have pure joy. And then I'm like, fuck, I can't do anything else. I need to do a story mission now. And then I'll go do a story mission. And I'm like, please let this be over. I just want this to be over. I just want to get, I just want to get back into the open world. Cause it's so good and it's so beautiful and it's so fun. But then it just like eh, grinds to a halt with like, follow this How- guy. You can't be seen by anybody. How's the combat system? Is it like Dark Souls? Or is it like combo driven? It's like um, I would say it's like the Assassin, the current Assassin's Creed system. Okay, it's kind of like a little bit like um, maybe Gotham's, not Gotham. What's it called? Arkham Asylum, but like uh-huh. but more nuanced. It's like Sekiro and uh, uh, like Assassin's Creed had a baby because like a, a lot okay. of it, like perfect parries will allow you to get an instant kill on people. Um, you do also have a bow and I like, oh, that's another thing you get gear sets. Like I have a gear set that makes like my, my melee better. And I have a gear set that makes my, uh, archery better. So you can like, sw- oh, hold on. This is the last thing I'll talk about. You've got my major gripes. One very cool system they have is called oh the stance system. I've got three out of the four. I think there's four stances, three out of the four stances right now. The stone stance, which is your basic stance for regular guys. And then uh-huh. the water stance, which is for dudes with shields. 
and uh-huh. then the wind stance, which is for guys with spears and axes. And you can switch through these stances like every single guy that you come up against. You hold R2 and then you hit one of the face buttons to switch to the correct stance. And uh-huh. the, fl- the flow of switching between the stances and using like the correct moves to take out guys with specific tools feels awesome. It's that re- sounds like a lot of fun. Nice. That is a lot of fun. So you're um, like, I'm going to take you down this way. And then as soon as that guy's down, you're like, all right, switch and form. Yep, and then exactly. come at me, bro. Yep, yep. Fight, and, fight, fight. And if you get it, in, if you get the dance of it in your brain, like it, it flows like water. It's really fun. Um, nice. So like I, I would recommend it, but you do have to suffer through like some old, old timey video gamey mechanics. And when yeah, I say old timey, I, I mean, when I say old timey, I mean like, you know, the first run of Xbox 360 games, basically. <laughs> yeah. Remember, it, Sucker Punch is, their last game was also plagued with a lot of these, like, very old mechanics. I don't know if you really? played the Infamous games. I have not played the, um, I've played the Infamous games at, like, GameSpot on, like, a, a GameStop on, like, a demo, you know? Yeah, the PS3 ones, or, or did you play the PS4 one? I played the PS3 ones, I think. I messed yeah. with those, yeah. Yeah, the PS3 ones were really good, and then the PS4 one came out, and if I remember correctly, it, it was pretty pretty lackluster reviews, and I played it, and it is not, it, it's stuck in like a previous generation. Yeah. Um, well, you, you it, can tell that this, this game yeah. was started when, um, you know, there were some old attitudes about game design, I feel, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like. Well, that came out in like 20, I want to say maybe 2014. So they've been working on Ghost since then. Yeah. So yeah, that's you know that's a long development. I would never say it's bad. It is not bad. Mm-hmm. I'm en- I'm enjoying myself immensely. I I'm considering doing a late night stream tonight, not because I think I'll get any viewers, but because I want to keep playing Ghost of Tsushima. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's it. Nice. That's all I got. Anything else? Fair enough. I forgot. Uh, I forgot one bit of house. Uh, keeping that i that i have wow. um, oh yeah i get a new laptop oh nice yeah. what you yeah. get i get a razor laptop oh. razor blade stealth 13 the boy can it's play the, games now <laughs> it's, it's nice. yeah dude it's it's a powerhouse it's yeah. a intel core i7 1065 Ooh. g7 clocks up to 3.9 gigahertz uh 16 gigs of ram um NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with 4 gigs of dedicated graphics memory. I'm making my Robert De Niro not bad face. <laughs> yeah. not That's bad. awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, does, yeah. does that mean we'll see you playing? Some, you'll be able to talk to us about PC games soon? Uh, maybe. Maybe. You're not, you're I'm not thinking gonna, about it. You're not just going to be the Switch boy? <laughs> maybe not. I mean, I feel like this computer is still very good. It can It can handle everything. I wish one uh, this of this is mostly to meet my my laptop needs, but I feel um, like one of us needs to bite the bullet, by the way, and get an Xbox for next generation. <laughs> oh yikes! Yeah, it's <laughs> not gonna be me. <laughs> All right, that's you it. This, do is, it. Th- this is what you're playing. This is what you're playing. We normally do this on Mondays at eight thirty <laughs> Eastern, eight thirty p.m. Eastern time, uh, but we had some scheduling conflicts this week, so that's why it's Tuesday. This is our first time doing it live. You can catch this uh, if you just dropped in. You can catch this on YouTube at He's Bad Games, and you can also find this on Spotify because I haven't figured out how to put it on every streaming platform, but I'm working on it. Um, thank you very much to... I've seen some people drop in and out. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, boys, for doing this with me. I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thank you.